Hey YouTube, we're gonna do part two of the fish room tour video that I started. Uh, you probably saw the freshwater video already, so we're gonna do uh, the saltwater update. Um, this isn't gonna take as long um, because there's only four tanks compared to the ones down in the basement, but I thought I would uh, go through all of these with you as well. One thing I wanna do on these at some point, hopefully soon, is uh, kinda do an update on each tank separately, going through real specifically all the equipment that I use as well as all the livestock in the tank so um, if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe I regularly or I try to regularly upload videos uh, on all my fish tanks I do fresh water and salt water again this video is going to be um, just based on the salt water but um, I also run a website called Aquatic Support Systems where I sell fish food and uh, aquarium related products. Make sure you go check that out as well. Um, but yeah, let's get this tour started. Okay, so the first tank I'm going to show you here is my uh, Red Sea E260 Max or Max E260, I forget. Um, this tank is, I think it's about five years old now and uh, it's doing fairly good overall, kind of on autopilot. Um, unfortunately right now a couple of the corals have just closed up and are kind of reopening like this toadstool here when this thing's open it just looks beautiful I'll try to maybe insert a picture of it or something but um, as you can see um, it's pretty full of uh, SPS or excuse me LPS corals um, I guess we'll just kind of start over here this is kind of a zoa garden over here several different types Nothing super high end, but uh, you know, they're fun. Um, yeah, something must have happened in here um, in the last several minutes because a bunch of zoas are closed up too. So I don't know if some fish went hyper and got some bam bams up above this uh, space invader that are closed up as well. But so anyway, yeah, I got a space invader here. Um, seven different. Uh, torches nothing real spectacular but um, just some different Indo torches um, some candy canes there down there another space invader some mushrooms um, symphilia I believe it's pronounced I always get those wrong and then over here is kind of more of the euphelia garden or area where I've got hammers and frog spawns and octo spawns various uh, degrees of growth um, and some more candy canes uh, this toadstool that I mentioned before some pallies that I just wish weren't in here but I also don't want to go in and try to cut them out and, and risk the pally toxins um, I don't even remember if I bought those in air early on or if they were a hitchhiker and they've just expanded but um, if anybody has any hints on the easiest and safest way to remove those, let me know. I don't know if I'll do it or not, but I'd be curious. I know people say to use protective gear, eye, eye, eye shields or face shields, um, gloves, full, so basically no skins exposed. And then I've got the Duncans up here and then a bunch of green star polyps along the back and they've actually taken over the returns which I'm not a huge fan of green star polyps anymore, but I uh, kind of like the way that these have grown and just filled in up there. Um, it kind of looks cool from, from a distance, but yeah, that's that tank. Um, you know, I'm running uh, the reef mat on it now and that's really helped things out. I've got a skimmer and a small fuge down there and I've got a trident and apex going, or apex and trident. And uh, yeah been enjoying it so let's turn around and go over to the 125 gallon this tank has been with me the longest as far as the reef tanks I think I figured now that I've had it somewhere between six and seven years it's a 125 gallon marine land tank um, I'm actually planning to replace it with uh, some kind of uh, Red Sea or water box tank in the uh, new year here since we've just kind of started the new year but this one's been doing pretty good overall as well i'll uh, just kind of go through what i've got in here um 
got the clover leaves uh, on the back wall. I got a monthly there. Um, a leather toadstool, several of those um, throughout this kind of area here. Um, I had this big pink one and it's split and it's dropped all over the tank. So that's unfortunate. It, I mean, I guess depending on how you look at it. Uh, this, uh, what do they call it, like a toxic green cabbage leather. Some more candy canes, trumpets, whatever you want to call them that are doing good. Um, for whatever reason, these green ones haven't been opening as much lately, but as you can see, these ones here are just as far open as you can get. Um, got a couple A cans down there, and um, uh, a couple others, the green and purple one that I forget what it's called, some shrooms. Um, and then I got this Gonoporia here that's kind of a lower profile one. Um, when I got it, some of it died off down at the bottom and now it's been doing pretty good overall. Um, I'm new to Gonoporias. And then next to it is Alvaporia, which I just picked up last week. It's, it's doing pretty good overall. It still hasn't opened up as much as it uh, was in the fish store. Shout out to New Wave Aquaria, my local fish store where I get most of my stuff from. I got this Zoa garden going on here. Um, this actually, a lot of it, the Blasto, um, or not Blasto, the uh, the orange one, um, blanking out on it. Anyway, the orange Zoa back there, I forget the name of it, real common. Everyone knows it and I'm blanking out here. Bam Bam, that's what it is. I wanted to say blasto, that was weird. Um, that one I grew out from just a couple polyps. Um, these right in front of you that we're looking at, I bought from a guy at this size just recently here and I'm really happy with them. Um, and then this rock with a few different types on it, I just picked up over the weekend at New Wave. Some of these other ones along here, some of these other zoas I've grown out from small frags. Um, the Euphelia in this tank is just not doing real well right now. I'm looking, I'm looking for help with Euphelia, so if anybody's got got uh, recommendations, let me know. Um, this really nice frog spawn here has just been dying off, losing heads left and right. Um, got some hammers and some frog spawns and an octo spawn or two in there, and then a Duncan over here. This is actually several pieces of Duncan that I put into one and kind of made my own colony. And then this right here, I've really been enjoying, this Gonoporia. Um, the clownfish, as you can see, enjoy it too. Um, I picked up this purple one a few weeks ago from a local guy, and I'm real happy with it. And then over this past weekend, I picked up this little red one, and um, it's doing pretty good too. Uh, some more cloves and some more uh, green Montes over there. I guess I didn't really go over fish in the other tank, but in here I've got a purple coal, a purple tang, a yellow tang, a uh, naso, a sail fin, a uh, fox face, a couple of uh, antheas, two clowns, uh, melanaris wrasse, there's a six line in there somewhere, a couple different gobies, um, the, uh, the yellow tang, I'm too close, it gets freaked out. Um, See if I back up if some of the fish that are hiding come out. Um, I can see the yellow tang behind the rocks there. It's going to peek out now. Cleaner wrasse is in there too. Uh, I think that's about it. Over here I had, um, I got a purple tang that just is hiding. Um, I got a couple of uh, Wheeler's gobies down there that are really fun. Um... What else? Uh, a couple of clowns, um, purple firefish, some cleaner shrimp, some red sh uh, fire shrimp. Um, got that one chromus in there. Um, six lion is in there. Um, two royal gramas that have grown up to be fairly good size. But um, oh, and I got this starfish over here that I really like. Anyway, let's go into the office and we'll take a look at those tanks. This 
So, this is, get some more light here. Things were getting weird with the lighting. Um, this is my Red C 525XL, Reefer 525XL. And then uh, over here, I got a Reefer 200XL. We'll go ahead and look at this first. This is a, the SPS dominant tank. Um, we'll talk about the fish first since they're out. Um, when I get closer, they may kind of freak out and go away. But in there, I've got a yellow tang. I've got a uh, yellow pyramid butterfly, a mimic tang, a china wrasse, a melanaris wrasse, a leopard wrasse, a six line wrasse, a flame angel, coral beauty, blue hippo tang. There is a white tailed coal tang in there. There's five chromis. There is a purple firefish um, and two small yellow chromis wrasses. I think that's about it for the livestock, and I think that's about all I'm going to. Put in there oh two clowns as well i forget the type but um anyway let's get a little closer and we'll go look at the corals and maybe get some close-ups of the fish right in front of me there is the flame angel there's the yellow tang coral beauty this is butterfly love that fish they're thinking it's feeding time, I think. Here's the Mimic tank. Ooh, he just freaked out. But yeah, let's just kind of start left to right here. Um, got a few scolies and some... Uh, and some uh, candy canes or trumpets over here, which I know aren't SPS, but I've got them in here anyway. And then I've got a Digi, some uh, green slimer back there, bird's nest, uh, some different... Um, some different type of acros, some different, um, I don't know the names of all these, some different, uh, different SPS corals. Um, go over to the side here and get a little view there. I do have an A-can down here as well. Um, this acro here is very bland color, but it's the one that's grown out the most. Got a little bubble algae problem up there, as you can probably see. Another green slimer, some uh, some more acros along the way here. Got a space invader. Um, another scully here. Really nice colony of digitata there. Um, stag back there. Um, some chalices along the way. Some of these are doing good, some not so much. I go in, it, this tank just seems to kind of go in spurts. Got the Superman or reverse Superman, I forget what it is. More trumpets there. Actually got some Zoas that kind of were put in there by mistake or they were they were on a, on a uh, frag plug and they just started to grow and I kind of left them because I kind of thought it was cool. Around the corner. Oh, there's the uh, white tail coal. He likes to hide a lot. There's the firefish, purple firefish, too. I got one, uh, I got a uh, Monty over here that's uh, actually came from my 125. Um, again, not as familiar with the names on the SPS yet, so I'm still learning, and I do realize that not everything in here is SPS. This Hollywood Stunner. The bird's nest is doing pretty good back here. You can get a good view of it. This guy here, I forget what this is called. I think it's a type of chalice and it's really grown. But yeah, I'm enjoying this tank. I really am at times becoming impatient, hoping that it would grow out quicker, but I know you gotta be patient with the SPS and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and then over here is the, uh, the, the NEM only tank, just filled with a bunch of rose bubble tip anemones. But you can see the, the uh, diamond goby, he's out. He's been doing a lot of excavating lately. Um, but yeah, in here I've got um, a six line and then 
Well, I started with seven clowns, and now we're down to six. One of them came up dead here just recently. But uh, all seven of them did good together for uh, over a year. The NEMS have been splitting. I've, I've added a couple uh, from the outside as well, but um, you can see they're all different shapes and sizes at this point. Some of them have the more bubble tips at the end. Some of them are the more long. Most of them are more long and stringy. Uh, some of them move a lot. This guy moves up here and then he'll go away. Um, one of them likes to go onto the, uh, onto the, uh, the magnet scraper over there a lot. And then he'll, he'll go away. And then I've got some, uh, some of the uh, rock flower nems as well. And I've got some sexy shrimp in there and some anemone crabs. There's one of the crabs right there you can see. Um, some of the sexy shrimp are right here. See them. Um, here's some of the clowns. They're just the basic uh, Ocellaris clowns. Um, there also should be somewhere, I haven't seen them in a while, a high fin goby in there. but. This tank is nice to have in my office where I work. Um, it's really relaxing. You just sit and watch the anemones um, sway in the in the in the uh, current. Um, a lot of times they're quite a bit more open than they are right now. I'm not really sure why. I, I know maybe an hour ago I did clean the glass, um, so that might have had something to do with it. But um, Unfortunately, tonight when I'm shooting the video, I'm seeing some closure on this tank and then that other tank where the coral, this toad stool was closed. There's a really big anemone crab right there. The one downside of having, I don't know if I'm gonna call this a harem, clown harem tank, because there's other things in it and a harem, I would, to me, should be quite a bit more clowns than seven or six now, but the downside with a lot of the NEMs like this is the clowns pretty much stay in there hosting and uh, so you don't see them swimming around as much. But overall, the structure with the anemones, when, the, when these NEMs are all opened up, you hardly see any of the rock. It's just kind of a big ball of swaying anemones. I think the last time I got a good count, there was probably 17 total in here, so it's pretty fun. So that's basically it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up here, but if you have any questions or suggestions um, on any of these tanks or things that you see, I'm, I'm still with salt water. I've only been doing it about seven years compared to 30 plus with fresh water. I'm still learning, um, especially with SPS type of stuff like this tank here. So I'm open to um, constructive criticism for sure. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try to do kind of a rundown on each one of these tanks, going over specifically all the equipment um, and the livestock coming up too, if I can make the time for it. But yeah, that's all I've got for now. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the viewers and uh, until next time, later.